In the video, we have a 150 pound glorious looking muscle packed Conny Corso named Bruce Wayne, who is owned by Jason Corey, who has a huge YouTube channel, the biggest in the world on the breed of Conny Corsos, and one of the biggest in the world on dog ownership in general. Yet my inbox is still flooded with people wanting my opinion on what happened in this video. So let's dive straight into it. So we've got Bruce Wayne and what I believe is an American bully uh, playing together in the water. Bruce has found himself a stick, no issue. The American bully is definitely a bit higher energy, but Bruce has been a wonderful dog here. There's a little bit of communication going on there, but it's playful, no harm done, so we're all okay. 100% playful. Bully's just might want a stick, and of course does not have it. And you saw right there, he got uh, in his face, and the Corso was just kind of like, whoa, I'm just going to drop this thing. Probably maybe come back to his, his owner, Jason. Just pause it there for a second. So, you may not have picked up on that, but there was a few crucial pieces of canine psychology, communication, and pack dynamics that just happened and unfolded right in front of us, leading up to this attack. The American Bully is clearly a higher energy dog than Bruce Wayne is. Bruce Wayne is definitely in a level of tolerating the behavior, but when he brought the stick out of the beach, and he wanted clearly a bit of peace. The American bully got too close to his face. Any face-to-face yep. -face interaction with dogs is considered bad manners, is how yes. people see it. And Bruce Wayne has administered what we class as a verbal correction. Verbal corrections are something that I advocate massively for here at Fenrir. And in the dog-to-dog -dog communication world, that's most commonly seen with a growl. But he's left. Exactly what happened. The dog got up in his face. He tried to move away. Bully came around again. And he verbally let the bully know through his growl. That's how they communicate with each other that, yo, you're stepping into my boundaries, relax a bit. Letting that dog know, I don't like what you're doing. Don't like it. Stop. It. Stop. And that's yep. exactly what I advocate for when I teach people how to implement a successful verbal correction. It's how 100%. You say, hey, stop. You got to make sure to follow through. You know, when you correct them, don't, don't do a correction if you're not going to follow through because otherwise they're just not going to get what you're telling them. Doing what you're doing. It's very, very natural. And interact this way. So let's carry on and see how this unfolds. They know what it is. So he's trying to avoid him right now. He's giving avoidance instead of doing a correction. Very well behaved, King Corso. Let's pause it there. Again, beautiful. Let's break down what happens. Again, American Bully clearly the higher energy. Yep. Body posture starting to fill out a little bit. And Bruce is offering a very, not submissive body posture. No. But clearly communicating to the dog that he wants a bit of space. He's doing that by not making direct eye contact. He's turning his head away from the American Bully. And he's turning the side of his body towards the American Bully. That's a very... The reason he says that it's not a fully submissive is because of how the dog carries himself. You know, he's not rolling over. He's just kind of avoiding the dog a bit. And then when the bully's not respecting that and gets back in his face several times, he verbally corrects the dog, which shows that he knows himself and he's confident in himself. And he knows that he has the ability, because I'm sure his owner has allowed him to do this before, he knows he can do this and he, he is allowed to correct other dogs. Non-threatening, but also non-playful way of communication. Yes, 100%. What that is saying is, hey, I'm cool with you being here, but just chill out a bit. Step, yeah, step back. The American bully isn't picking up on those communication cues and is continuing to pursue Bruce Wayne towards the face. And in this situation, that verbal correction that was administered earlier has not been listened to. So Bruce has stepped up his verbal correction level a notch and has administered a bark. That is a higher level verbal correction. Let's carry on and see what happens. Pause it there. That's so again, funny. Clearly now and pause it too. He's getting more agitated, a little frustrated with the bully, and he's expressing that through the tone of his barks and the new demeanor he's now presenting towards him. So. Now seeing Bruce's uncomfortability with this situation, yes. you're also clearly seeing this dog not responding to the verbal correction. Now this is a classic problem, not just between dogs, but also between humans and dogs. When I advocate for a verbal correction, one of the main rebuttals I get from people struggling is when I'm telling my dog no, I'm using an ah-ah or a sh noise, and they just won't listen to me. They won't stop doing what they're doing. But right here in front of us, we have a beautiful example of a dog verbally correcting another dog, but that dog not listening to that verbal correction. So let's continue. So right there, he's just doing the same thing, just barking at him, telling him, yo, relax. Let's pause it there. 
So now things are clearly starting to escalate. Those verbal corrections are coming in. Bruce is being very, very clear. You can see at this pause spot that the hackles are up on his back. He's now starting to get frustrated. The dog is not listening and displaying basic K90, K9 communication manners by backing down when told. A better socialized dog, a more well-rounded, more passive, more submissive dog, would have not even got to the point with the growl communication. The simple yep. body language movements would have never allowed this to happen. This dog, I don't believe he's being Probably just rolled I over. He hasn't learned these communication cues very well and is trying to instigate play, but doesn't know how to do that well. And that is so I'm going to have to 100% agree with him. I love this guy and total facts right there. He just doesn't know how to play. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's trying to be playful. Uh, some bullies are just really bouncy. And the Corso just doesn't like that kind of play right now. He does, he's not having it. It's why it's so important that you socialize your dogs well with ideally good quality, well-rounded, well-mannered role model dogs, especially when the dog is young. When dogs are playing, they're having back and forth conversations like we could never... You know, like he just said that, that's really important. Like when people go to say a breeder, if they haven't been letting the pack properly work with each other, play with each other, it's good for the breeder to hold them for uh, 12 weeks is really nice. If they're selling them before eight weeks, they definitely don't even get that dog. But 12 weeks is really nice because then they're getting more time with their pack, with their family, their mom. Definitely meet the parents and see how the mom interacts with the puppies. Because if the mom's too rough with the puppies, that's going to move on to adulthood with those puppies. So, you know, learn a little bit about the family dynamics before you get that dog. And those conversations are teaching them so much that we can't teach them. It's why I use role model dogs True. when I work with dangerous. It's why I use role model dogs with people's puppies all of the time. It's so important. As so you can important, see, man. Carry on. Okay. So right there, that was a warning. He's telling him, yo, back off. He's pushing on him. And there we go. Let's pause it. So that was the attack. And up to this point, I've kind of let... That's funny, you know, I can understand how some people could see that as an attack, but that's definitely not an attack in, in a dog uh, behavioral state, or, no. Do you go along with that being an attack? Because my inbox has been flooded with people saying, Will, will you react to Bruce Wayne attacking that dog in the video? I want to let this run on a little bit more, so we can play it again, and let's just let this unfold a bit more and now see what happens. Mm. Let's pause it there. And done. The dog got the message and has now you instantly seen that energy level, that taut, tight, upright body language of the American bully, that high energy tension dissipates instantly and come down. And then everybody was relaxed. Now, it is worth noting that Jason is one of my closest friends, and I truly believe that Bruce Wayne is, if not the best, one of the best trained Connie Cortos on the planet. And I actually think what he did here was beautiful. Not an attack whatsoever. It looks aggressive. No. It sounds mean to the untrained eye or to the wrong person. They would consider that their dog had been attacked by a Connie Corso and would have responded completely inappropriately. How this panned out was absolutely glorious and how Jason and the owner of the American Bully responded was also perfect and made it a wonderful learning experience for the American Bully in particular. And that's because Bruce Wayne is an impeccably trained dog. Not an aggressive one. Impeccably trained, impeccably balanced and impeccably mannered. And what he did is what we need to try and replicate with our dogs. He's yeah, totally. A minimum level of correction. I'm going to stop it right there. And what he said right there, like, you're mimicking the dogs when we act like them in that sense. When we do these corrections like them, you know, we're working on their level of understanding. Instead of trying to get them to understand our psychology, our human psychology, we're kind of meeting them halfway by correcting the dog in the way another dog would correct each other, they learn so much faster because they are they know what you're telling them already when you do those corrections, if you do them properly. Uh, so you're not gonna have as much of a battle um, or, you know, for instance, if you're gonna be doing just positive reinforcement, it can be really hard to cue or to curve certain behaviors because uh, you're not communicating with the dog on a level that the dog understands. And that, that can make such a big difference, especially with a bully breed like this or any high powerful breed, a dominant breed, like a dog like this, uh, you know, positive training can be really, really effective. But this is a 180 pound dog. You don't want a dog like this thinking he can take control of the situation, uh, you know, like he would push on another dog like that in a very 
good manner as well, but he, in the wrong hands, is very likely to hurt another dog that was intact like that one, doing things like that, if the dog was doing it in a dominant sense. Now that one was in a more playful sense, and so this guy would be just fine with him. He loves playful dogs, but if that dog was in any way dominant, in any kind of form towards him that he didn't like and he felt comfortable with, he would be dominant back. And that's when you can have something bad happen with such a huge dog. Uh, thankfully, this guy has always been very dog friendly, and so I haven't had to worry much about him interacting with other dogs. He's always been really good but he is re-reactive when another dog tries to fight him because he is a breed that doesn't back down easily. So when a dog challenges him, he's just gonna be like, no, you do not do that. So you need to do your research on the breed that you want and figure out, is this the breed for me? Because this guy was bred to protect herds in the mountain, in the Caucasian mountains, fight off bears and lions. He's a huge breed, he's very powerful. And if you don't have the yard or the time to exercise him, you don't have the time to get him socialized and do a lot of training with him so he's good in all kinds of different real life situations, you're just gonna have a dog you're sheltering all the time because he's gonna get big and you're gonna start getting fearful that something's gonna happen like these owners did. All right, so do your research and learn, is this the breed I wanna get? And if you don't feel like you can, you, you can work with them, find another breed. There's so many out there to choose from. Uh, I got off topic, so let's go back to this. Deter the undesirable behavior. That dog was being obnoxious, overly energetic, and coming too face to face. He gave him a warning with a growl, low level verbal correction. The dog didn't respond. That might be you saying, no, the dog didn't respond, and he started to ramp up. So Bruce ramped up his correction. Just yep. brought it just higher than the level of the behavior that the American bully was showing. And he turned it to a louder, larger verbal correction. See, I like to, just match their energy I try not to go and escalate it by going over like he describes how Bruce did which it can work just fine but depending on the dog you escalating the situation will make that dog escalate whereas if you match the situation it's less likely to escalate the situation so I hope that makes sense in the form of those barks so that dog knows no I'm being serious stop right now I need you to stop that's not acceptable behavior the American boy still didn't stop so Bruce then took it off another level and administered what is actually a very low level physical correction. If you go back and oh, totally. at no point did Bruce bite the dog. <sighs> it was a, a bluff charge and a I'll have to jump back to it. approach to correction. It's the kind of thing that we can do by standing big and proud and walking a dog down. But the thing I want like to he said right there, you walk the dog down. When you hold yourself in a body language like a dog, like, hey, stop, and you let that confidence and that energy feed off of you, the dog has sent that. Him right here, he's a huge dog. I don't have to touch him to give him a physical correction most of the time. You know, well, I would have to give, I would have to touch him to give him a physical, I don't have to touch him to give him a correction most of the time because I can just walk right up to him and say no. And he's gonna look at me and be like, oh, he's serious, I did something wrong. You know, what did I do? Depending on the, the degree of what he did, depending on his um, attention to me after the correction, I may stand there and make him lay down just by either telling him lay down. If he doesn't lay down, I'll just stand over him just like another dog would. Just, hey, I want you to lie down. And I'll just tell him that through my mind, my body language, and just how I hold myself, and he'll just lay right down. And you can do that with any dog just you got to work with him just do some time I mean, this is a huge breed and he is a dog like I said earlier challenges and he challenged me several times because that's just what he learned from his previous owners that I challenge I win I get my way if your dog isn't respecting your verbal correction it means that you are not following through I spoke to Jason about this clip and after this you know like that follow through I, I said it earlier follow through so important if you you know you're tired of your dog barking or something outside and you say no shut up whatever you get getting frustrated and you're trying to stop them but you're not willing to actually go out there and stop your dog from barking don't do it why you're, you're literally teaching the dog that that word no stop barking means nothing because you're not going to follow through and actually stop them and then show them what you want. 
don't do it. Let them bark until you have the time, the patience to go out there and correct them. Use a, you know, a note from the positive reinforcement book. Just ignore them. Let them quiet down. Eventually they'll quiet down. They'll stop being anxious. They'll stop barking. And you can step outside and say, good boy, good job. You did awesome. Good boy. You know, mix up your styles. Don't constantly say no, stop barking if you're not going to follow through and make them stop doing the behavior you don't like. Because after that, the American bully had learned to respect those boundaries and that communication that Bruce Wayne displayed. So next time Bruce Wayne uses a lower level verbal correction, the dog will instantly respond because he has learned through that experience that Bruce will take it up a level and he will follow through. He won't back down. Too many people try to correct a dog, the dog ignores them and then we have no way to follow through or we're not prepared to follow yeah. through. And that's what we absolutely must Gotta be Gotta be prepared, to gotta follow now, through. some dogs, and this is where choosing the right breed for you and the right temperament for you is incredibly important. An incredibly skilled uh, dog owner um, like Jason can handle a dog like a Connie Corso and Bruce Wayne. And when Bruce was a puppy, Jason did exactly the same thing to Bruce to teach him the same at adequate levels. And that's what turned Bruce into a beautiful canine companion. But dogs are more likely to be more dominant, will test those boundaries harder than a more submissive passive dog will, which means you might need to level up your correction and your authority to be able to get that message through to them. If you don't have the skill or the personality to do that, you should not be considered a breed that's prone to be that way. And you should consider a breed that is better. That's why I just went over that. If you can't do that, don't get that breed. Simple very responsive and sensitive to very low level corrections, then you don't need to climb those levels of correction. And the last thing I want you to take from this video is that you can clearly see how Jason handled this. I was proud of him. As soon as it happened, he didn't panic. Literally Good. no emotion from him whatsoever. No, I need to Jason panic. knows and has the confidence that if he thought Bruce was going out of line with nothing more than a Bruce, hey stop, Bruce would stop because he respects in the same principle that this bully needs to respect Bruce Wayne's boundaries. Bruce Wayne respects. See, and when you follow through on your corrections and you make sure your dog understands, what that no means you need to stop, you'll have that response that he just described Jason having with his cane corso. When you know you can do that with your dog, you'll feel more confident in a situation like this. Jason's as his calm, consistent leader. But as soon as the correction was administered and that bully brought his energy level down and learned his lesson, no emotion change. Good job, let's go. We move on. Right. There was no panic, there was no stress. It's those things that cause issues in interactions like this. When owners start to get anxious, when owners start to panic, when owners think it's much worse than it actually is. And the problem with dogs like Bruce Wayne is that they get very easily judged because of simply how they look. So yep. if you want to check the whole video out, it's a short section from a beautiful blog, Jason's channel, one of the best on YouTube. There'll be a link down to that video in the description box below. All right, so Super we're gonna check him out. We're gonna watch this other video. Welcome back. Oh, that one's louder. Back to this rainy Tuesday afternoon, guys. I am taking Bruce Wayne to meet another puppy dog named Red. Decided the beach is a good spot for them to meet. That way the dogs have plenty of space to run around and don't hear. Bruce Wayne is very particular to dogs he likes, so if he doesn't really like the dog, he can just hop in the water and avoid the dog and have fun by himself. So we're about to do this, bro. Let's go! <laughs> That's right. Look at him have fun. They love the water. This dude does. He just sits out in the rain. He don't care. I'm gonna stop it. So you can see here, this is before the attack clearly. The bull is very playful. He's following around the Corso. He's just like, what's going on? He's intrigued, you know, where are you going? I wanna be involved with what you're doing. You know, just his demeanor by the fact that he's following him around, he's checking him all the time, just kinda, you know, what's going on? It's, it's a good thing, you know? <laughs> That's right, look at that butt wiggle. <laughs> okay, so this I believe is where it's at, so I'm gonna slow it down for us. Oh, it looks like they got it real slow for us. Or maybe that's just because it was faster. <laughs> okay. That happened real quick there. So they're going to do a nice slow motion for us. All right, so see that? Okay. So I can definitely see why someone can see that as a fight 
or see that as an attack. Um, but you can tell with how he's nipping, he's not trying to cause blood. You know, he like if he really wanted to, he would have just kept going, and you would have heard, you know, Jason do a correction. Uh, but he didn't. And see this, the bully was like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm moving. Nope, I'm moving." He, he he respected that correction because he's doing it in a more playful manner. You know, you you'd only have this problem of a, a something escalating if that bully was more aggressive. That bully was more, you know, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna back down. Then you could kind of see something happening there. Uh, but the bully actually respected that finally, which is good. That's that's a good thing. And now we're back to normal. Back to normal. And just like that, you're having good. A very good, very good dog. I like it. I think on to the next, uh, next group of videos, I think. That was good. I like it, guys.